welcome to ING. When people enter the new Moorgate building, they walk through a 20th century doorway, but right into a 21st century bank. A bank located in the centre of the City of London, the preeminent global financial centre. From the late 18th century onwards, London is the global financial centre. It's the market where people come to. It's the market that the most able, talented merchants from across Europe, they're heading to London. Occupying just over one square mile, the city has been London's beating heart since the Middle Ages. Centred around the Bank of England, some of the most famous names in finance and trading were founded here. Strong growth in the 19th and 20th centuries made London the most important location for business in the world, and ING is proud to be continuing that tradition today. Well, the strength of the city is really a combination of three things. It's people, uh, the clients that are based here, and also the environment itself. The City of London attracts an enormous range of people and ING Bank has got over 50 nationalities represented within its business. Just in my team, I work in the infrastructure finance team here at ING. We have 22 people in London with nine nationalities represented. It's diverse, it's dynamic, and from that diversity comes great strength. In terms of the business, we have clients here from all around the world, infrastructure equity funds, corporates that we do business with, that are based here from North America, from Europe, from Asia. And they come here because this is a hub. This is like the nucleus in an interconnected world. In 1995, when Bearings was acquired by ING, one of the extraordinary things that ING got with that acquisition was this unrivaled archive. Reflected in the archive is not just the history of Bearings as a company, it's the development of the capital markets, it's the development of private banking services, it's the development of investment management. It reflects all of those activities which grew from this initial partnership that was set up back in 1762. In the 21st century, the expectations of clients are no different to those of the 20th or the 19th century. They expect their banks to be there to support them. ING has always anticipated client requirements, anticipated their demands, and as we enter the 21st century, we're focused in on innovation, both financial innovation, but also sustainable transitions, and how all of these things will affect clients. The important role of a bank is to ensure that the client is supported. If we think at ING, it was probably the first fintech with uh, the creation of ING Direct or around 20 years ago. And then since then, there was this strong brand and culture within ING is part of the DNA to continue to challenge and innovate. Started on the retail side, but now come to the wholesale banking side and financial market side as well. One of the key differentiators for our clients is really the ING people. And one of the intrinsic values that the ING people bring that is different from our competitors is very much that we are we're dynamic, we're very can-do, very positive attitudes, but we're also very empathetic towards our clients. If you're sitting in the City of London, clients from all over the world are attracted here because this is one of the key centres of finance on the planet. So we see Asian clients, American clients, European clients, all coming to London, speaking to us, trying to find solutions to financial issues they have. If you want to have the conversations that matter, that influence people in this business and in this dynamic industry, London is the place to be. ING is of course proud of its history, but it is optimistic towards the future. We are in a building now which is ING's building. For the first time in many years, on the outside we have ING's name. And that is a very important statement by the firm about our presence here.